So I've played chess for almost 30 years, and for the first time, just the other day, I finally got the king and rook versus king and knight endgame. Now, the title of the video might have been a little bit misleading because you can't always force a win, but there are some situations where you can win with the rook. So in this video, I'm gonna kind of demystify this endgame. I think a lot of people are confused and don't really understand it. It's really not that bad once you know uh, what the secrets are. So that's what I'm gonna explain in this video. Now, before we get started, most of the positions that I'm gonna show you, I got from Yasser Sirwayan's book. So this is the, the endgame book that I recommend. Um, I've had this one for many, many years. It's kind of falling apart, but um, the positions that I'm gonna show you came out of there and that's kind of how I learned. So uh, if you're interested in that, there's a link in the description below, but let's go ahead and get started. So here's the deal with the king and, and rook against king and knight. If black has the king and the knight in the center of the board, uh, and they're together, it's a draw. Okay, you can't force a win if black has this setup and they know what to do. So as an example, suppose we play, you know, rook to b5, kind of trying to pin the knight, black goes back, we go up, and black just simply moves the knight somewhere. So we're like, okay, well, we can't put him in check because the knight's covering it, so we'll maybe just attack the knight. Well, the knight just goes back, puts us in check, now we have to move. And black can basically just do this little dance all, all day long. As long as they don't make a mistake, we can come over here and black's just gonna go back. We can try check, black's just gonna kind of slide around back and forth, back and forth. We can't ever make progress. Now, that being said, there are certain situations where you can win. And the way that I think you should remember is that there are two different situations where you can win. All right, so the first situation is when the king and the knight are kind of either in the corner or on the edge of the board already. There's two things that you want to try to do. Number one, try to either threaten a checkmate on the king, or number two, try to potentially trap the knight. Now, we can't really threaten checkmate here because we, we can't even go up. The knight's kind of covering it, um, and our rook's not really in position to deliver checkmate, but we can try to trap the knight. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to play king to g6. We're attacking the knight, and well, the knight can't move there, can't move there. And so black has to play king over. And now, uh, see if you can figure out the move that we should play for white. Go ahead and pause the video if you want. Take a second, see if you can find the move. This is actually kind of a zook swing position where we just wanna do like a waiting move. So we're gonna just move our rook. And the point is that any of black's moves are bad. So let's start with the obvious ones. Knight here, knight here, just loses the knight, right? So they, they can't do that. Uh, king in the corner. Again, loses the knight because now we can just pin it. Can't move and we'll take it next move. So that only really leaves black with, and also king f8 also loses the knight. So it only leaves black with one move. Knight to f8, check. Uh, but now we can play king to f6, so it's check. Blocking with the knight just loses the knight, so black has to, to move over. Now we can play king to f7, and we're attacking the knight again. Can't go here, can't go here. Uh, if it runs over here, we just have checkmate, which means the knight has to go here. And now we have this beautiful move, uh, rook to g8 mate. And so black's problem was that they were already kind of stuck in the corner. The knight didn't have a lot of options. It was also stuck. So if you find yourself in that position, you can win. Now, the other way you could win would be a position like this. Now, what is so important about this position? There's one factor that is why you can win. And the factor has to do with the fact that the king and the knight are separated, okay? So if you're trying to defend with a king and a knight, you always wanna keep them relatively close together to where like the knight can get to the king to be defended by the king in one move. As long as you're doing that, you're fine. In this case, notice how black's knight is, you know, two moves away from being defended by the king, okay? And that is the secret to how we can win as white. So if you ever find yourself in a position like this where you have the king and the rook against the king and the knight and the knight is separated, your only goal, listen carefully, this is the important part about this endgame, your only goal is to trap the knight. Don't let the knight get back to the king, trap it, win the knight, and win the game, okay? So don't like say like, well, let me see if I can checkmate the king by moving my king and rook over here, because if you do that, you're gonna give the knight time to come back and help out, and then you're, you're not gonna be able to win, okay? So with that in mind, how do, what move should we play? What move should we play here as white? Knowing that the goal is to prevent Black's Knight from getting back to um, their king, right? This is what Black wants to do. What, what move should we play? 
if you said king to d6, you are correct. Why is that the best move? Because we're taking away the squares that the knight would like to go to. And so by doing that, we are going to be able to keep the knight away from the king. And eventually, it's not that easy, but eventually we can trap the knight and win the knight and, and win the game. So let's let's just take an example. Like Let's say black decides, you know what, I'm just going to run over here and, and try to loop around a different way. So they play knight to f4. What can we do? Well, there's actually a really cool uh, little a technique here that you want to pay attention to. You want to remember this one. We play rook to d2. Now, how did we come up with rook to d2? Notice how it's, um, you know, diagonally from the knight with one space in between. Okay, that is really good because check out how this rook is controlling these squares that the knight would like to go to. See that? We're really cutting off the knight's escape route and also the king uh, controls this square. And so the knight is extremely limited. Okay, that's why this is such a good square for the rook. So this is a maneuver you want to remember. Remember, we're trying to trap the knight and also prevent it from getting back to the king. Okay, so let's see, what can black do? Maybe they just move their king. Well, now we can play king to e5. So we're, we're attacking the knight, but also we're not um, we're not letting it escape, right? Let's say, well, maybe black goes here. Uh, check. What do we do now? Again, we're attacking the knight, also taking away the squares that would bring the knight closer to the king. That as long as you remember that, you, you're you're good. Okay. So let's say black hops back here. What do we do? Now we can play king to f5. Again, look at this. We've now taken away another square from the knight, and the rook is still covering all of these. So look at this knight. It can't go anywhere that it would like to go. See that? So what's it going to have to do? It has to go back to one of these squares, or I should do those in green, I guess. It has to go back to one of these. So let's say. Knight, um, oops, sorry, um, knight h5. And now what can we do? What's the move for white? You guys should be able to find this one. Yep, rook to g2, right? Because look what we've done. We've successfully um, trapped all of the knights. Uh, sorry, I'm having a hard time here. Uh, we've trapped all of the knights' escape squares. And it doesn't really matter. Black can do whatever they want with their king. We're just going to bring our rook up and we have, like I said, trapped the knight. Okay. So that is what you have to remember. Okay. Going back to the, to the beginning of this position, when the king and the knight are separated from each other, all you have to do is hunt the knight. Just hunt the knight. Use your king and your rook, hunt the knight. Don't ever let it get back um, to the king. Knights don't move that way, but don't ever let it get back to the king. That's how you win. Okay. Um, so that's pretty much all there is to the king and knight endgame. Again, if it's like this, it's going to be a draw. If, if black knows what they're doing, you can't force a win. Okay. So just know that. But if they're on the edge of the board, like, like this one that we saw, you have chances with some tricks. Um, and then also if the knight and the king are separated, all you have to do is trap the knight. Remember that little maneuver with your rook to, to control the squares that the knight goes to. And that's how you can win that end game. Um, hope that was helpful to you guys. Let me know questions, comments. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Stay sharp, play smart, take care.